So today I'm joined by a very special guest. We have Jake Diego coming all the way from the US and we're going to talk all about how to get started in your Amazon USA business. Uh, Jake's had a, an amazing couple of years. He's been able to quit his job, build his business. He's in his warehouse right now. So we're going to just to dig into his experiences, uh, how he started his business and give you lots of great tips and lessons from his personal journey. So super, super excited for you to be here, Jake. Thank you, Kev. Thanks for having me on. So, um, Jake, you're a, a special returning guest. You've been on the channel a, a couple of times and um, you've learned uh, lots of amazing insights uh, over the last couple of years. Uh, did you want to just share, for those that don't know, uh, who, who Jake is um, and what you've been up to over the last couple of years? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been, it's been a little bit since I've been on the camera, so this is kind of nice to you know, catch up or whatever. So I'm sure we'll kind of go all over the place. But if, uh, if somebody, you know, wants to know more about this, feel free to comment down below or what have you. So I started in March of 2017, after a friend of mine told me that every time she goes on Amazon, she always looks at that used and new category. And at the time, I found my uh, original Game Boy and wanted to get a game for it. And, and I went on there, I went and used and new, I ordered the Zelda Link's Awakening for the Game Boy and uh and it came in a in a plain envelope a and I pulled it out game worked and I thought uh you know if somebody else is doing this so how does this whole process work and just going down bunny trail after bunny trail and learning about it yeah and um fast forward some years you've been you've been able to quit your job you've uh, you're now in the warehouse do you want to just uh, share a little bit about um how how everything's going with you right now and then we'll dig into uh, for those that wanting to get, actually get started and, wh and where the best place is to start absolutely yeah it took a number of years to to get to the warehouse and uh you know sometimes when you are like smaller and more nimble you actually have a lot of advantages you know whether that's using maybe somebody else to help you or maybe you're just working out of your garage or basement so for uh eight, nine for a little over three years then, yeah, I was just either in my basement or in the garage doing the doing Amazon FBA. And then, yes, like you said, it got to a big enough proportion where I could actually quit my job. So now, voila, here's the warehouse, which is about, uh, <laughs> about 1,200 square feet. It's not climate controlled. So luckily, we're doing this in the morning. So if you hear fans and that, that's the whole thing behind that. And uh, I'm sure you know about that, too. It's Ooh, yeah, it, get, it gets hot in the summer and it gets freezing in the winter. The joys of uh, being in your own warehouse. So, um, okay then, Jake. So, if somebody's looking at getting started on on Amazon FBA, what what would you say is some of the the biggest sort of lessons and uh, the biggest advice that we'd be able to give here? Yeah, well, you know, kind of like when I was talking about how I was in the basement and that for so long is, uh, you know, don't pile it all on at once. Like, you know, you don't need the, uh, you know, a glue a glue tape dispenser. There we go. You know, you don't need the fancy equipment, that kind of stuff. I just start with really simple things like um, poly bags and that. But as far as the prep goes, but let me back it up a second. And that is same thing with employees and that. That's more or less the way that, that I got to having a two-part, three-part-time employees it's just by gradually getting to there. Cause it's a little hard when you're in your basement and you're doing your own thing. Uh, signing up though was super easy. So back to the original story about the game boy game. I, again, I just kind of went down the bunny trail and looked at Amazon and it said, uh, maybe it was sell one like this, I think is what it is. I couldn't pull up a page, but anyways, I, uh, I saw that and I clicked it and then you basically needed a driver's license and a bank account and yeah yep and then you could just sign up and i got the app and i started scanning stuff uh with that amazon seller app so i just uh yeah they you know pull, go ahead yeah amazon have, have made it incredibly easy now um is is there anything because i know that there's going to be there's a there's a lot of uh people within our community that are either just getting started or they've actually got started and they they're looking at actually either expanding to different marketplaces. I know I've had 
um, a number of conversations of people going from the UK to, to the USA or the UK to Europe. So um, is, is there anything to be aware of specifically from a, a USA perspective? It seems like a lot of times we'll get the we'll get the new rollouts that Amazon does first. So it's kind of nice if you're going UK to Am to US, excuse me, because you kind of you get a little bit of lead. Like for example, the recent the restock limits and the storage limits in that. I, I guess they always had storage limits, but like the restock, it seemed like we got that a little bit sooner than you, and then it kind of rolled out to you. Uh, similarly with the uh, the uh, categories of essentials, if you recall back to 2020, it seemed like we maybe got that, you know, a couple weeks ahead of things. So uh, you're, you're, you're at an advantage if you're coming from the, or no, that would be a disadvantage. Dang it. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I guess well, I mean, uh, it would be an advantage to go the other way. <laughs> yeah. And also I think um, if you have got it in multiple marketplaces, you, you know what's going to hit your UK uh, business before it actually hits your UK business, but, um, uh, but I guess I, I mean, shouldn't, uh, and I shouldn't use the word disadvantage, Kev. I guess because that's maybe <laughs> a little bit stronger of a word. Like you know, if you talk to anybody or you look at anybody on social media or something, you'll see you know what's coming before it comes. And usually, I guess the thing that does make it advantageous is by the time it does roll out there, there's usually some kind of solution. You know, either you know, setting it up a different way or taking out your old inventory or looking at your IPI score on a weekly basis, you know. So I guess you get that advantage of maybe, in most cases, knowing how to already deal with that new thing they're rolling out. Yeah. And um, as a whole, when you think of the actual marketplace, you know, the US was the, you know, the original, that's where Amazon was founded. And, you know, mm -hmm. when you comp when you think of the, the US as a, as what the actual demand in the US is. Do you, do you have any statistics off the top of your head on the size of the, the marketplace in the US? It will be substantially bigger than the UK, that's for sure. Uh, I don't, I don't. Um, I'm totally blank when it comes to that. I, I do know uh, that, you know, there's products that could be seasonal or what have you, such as like backpacks at the moment where if you got them in stock, you're just going to sell them. So like over the weekend, we sold almost 30 you know, on, on a single day, I only listed them yesterday on Sunday. So that's, you know, that's a vague response, but uh, it, it is a, it is many times larger. I just don't know what that number is, unfortunately. Yeah. And um, yeah, I mean, it, it's one of those things that I've always, it's always interested me because like, you know, when you, when you think of the UK in the US, it's like so small compared to the US you know, millions upon millions of people in the US buying every single day. But, um, you know, for, for those that are watching, how would you go about potentially even finding your first product? Or what, you know, what, what what's the biggest of the lessons that you've learned in terms of um, uh, finding products to purchase and sell in the first place? Yeah, I mean, I made it sound a little bit easier than maybe it is because it's a little bit more than just getting the app on your phone and scanning stuff. But that is a huge step because a lot of times when people reach out, you know, I just am like, oh, you just need a driver's license and a bank account and then you can get an account. And, and you know, although it sounds very trivial, it's just that one little step and you don't have to eat the whole horse then. So anyways, after uh, good, good question. So after you have the, the uh, account and after you have the app, then you'll, it'll basically allow you to scan, you know, barcodes of uh, barcodes of items. And when you pull up that page, it'll tell you exactly like this item, you know, is a shark research boat by Animal Planet. It'll tell you it's in uh, the toy category. It'll tell you that the, um, the new price right now is, you know, X, that the old price, not old price, the <laughs> used price is uh, usually a little bit lower. And it'll spell it all out. But one of the things I didn't mention that's actually probably one of the more important ones is uh, sales rank. And uh, with sales rank, the lower number, the better. So like, like a game of golf. So if this was, say, 1,000, then it's going to sell you know, faster than maybe some piece of uh, some article of clothing that's you know, rated, uh, let's say, eh, probably like 40,000 or something. So, so you need to understand uh, sales rank, which, again, the lower the number, the, the better. Yeah, I, I, 
the, the way I always try to explain sales rank, it's like a uh, sales rank is, um, it's just, it's a, it's a moment in time in the algorithm of, of Amazon that's ranked all the products within the, that category. So, um, you know, the num the number one would be the number one bestseller within that category, which people seem to, you know, but you can, you can understand that and you can relate to that. Okay. It's got the number one best selling badge, but like, let's say for example, you've got a toys category that's got millions of different items. Something may be ranked at a um, hundred thousand. Let's say that's basically saying that is the hundred thousand best selling toy within the category. So there is, there is a, there's a toy ranked at uh, 9,999 as well. Um, and the reason why that's really, really useful to know is because then you can use tools like a like a keeper, for example, and you can stretch that out over time. And you can actually uh, the, the the graph, the trend of the sales rank lets us know, and we're able to actually calculate how many sales there's been. So um, I, the the reason why I mentioned that because some people get into a bit of a trap of uh, you know if 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 the sales rank is less than a hundred thousand then that's it, I'm going to purchase it. But it's really, you've got to take it over a period of time. True, true. Yeah, it's just uh, it's just that Snapchat. So a snapshot. So <laughs> if you scan, I got social media on the brain, Kev. I, uh, you know, if you scanned any backpacks right now, they'd be ridiculously low. But yes, if it's um, end of the semester, then it's going to be much higher. And, and what, what would you say then from a, a, a starting capital point of view? You know, what, what, what would you recommend to somebody? If somebody's saying, okay, I want to get started, how much capital do you think we, I need to, to give this a good go? I guess if you're not going to, if you're not going to, there's, there's two forms in Amazon. There's uh, the FBM, so like uh, eBay. Uh, seller gets the order, seller finds the product, seller sends it to the buyer. And then there's FBA where uh, seller buys the product, Amazon finds the products because it's, you've already sent it to their warehouse. And then Amazon sells them the product. So if you want to go the FBA route, I, I'm, I'm going to say like $1,000. Maybe that's a little high. Maybe 500 would be all right. But if you're going to go the FBM route, you could just start with whatever you got right now. So like me, I was going to pawn stores and buying GameCube game or not GameCube, uh, Game Boy games like Pokemon Yellow, Pokemon Blue. And just, you know, I might only have three listings, five listings or whatever. But they would eventually sell, especially video games, and uh, just keep repeating that process. Yeah, I mean, very similar to uh, the way I started. I mean, I had some credit available, and uh, this isn't financial advice or anything like that, but um, I did have some credit available. But to start with, I actually, my first order was only for £50, and it was for one item. You know, and my, the first shipment that I created was, was, it only had something like 18 units or something like that um and hmm. but that's the great thing about amazon fba you can you can you can start with as little or as much as you want because there is no there's there doesn't appear to be um any sign of amazon slowing down i mean when you first started jake um you know amazon was huge then but how big is amazon right now it's, it's insane how much they've grown Oh yeah. Especially after last year, they were doing like 23% one quarter. I think I heard on their Amazon investor thing. And then I think they even had a quarter that was like 38% or something crazy. I mean, some of that's AWS and that, but still it's all, it's everything. I know that yeah. third party sellers though, account for 56% of all Amazon sales sales. So that's pretty amazing when you think about that. It is, and it's a, an amazing opportunity. So it really, really is. So, um, so going back onto a little bit of your uh, lessons learned then throughout the the last few years, Jake. Because I think you, did you start? Was it two thousand and seventeen, two thousand and eighteen time? Yeah, twenty seventeen. Yeah, yeah, yeah twenty seventeen. Um, you, you will have learned a, a lot of great lessons. I'm sure it's not been all plain sailing for you. Um, off the top of your head, has there been anything uh, that you can think of that's like, I, I went through that experience, or I learned this, uh, that's been uh, something that you could recommend to others? Sure. So 
like I was saying, between like the UK and the US, it's typically rolled out in the US for, uh, before. But when those things are rolled out, I mean, you basically have two choices every time. You're either going to you know, do it or not. And, you know, the not doing it is going to lead to, you know, eventually you getting suspended or something like that or losing storage or what have you. So one of the biggest traits I'd say, no matter what happens, is they're always changing it. So you have to be adaptable. Uh, you just have to be knowing what's going on. And when you see those little flags in your account and you see the news and you see all that, read them, you know, read them and, and be adaptable because it's uh, it's definitely changed over the years, especially with those restock limits, especially with that kind of stuff. And uh, just the categories come and go, the products come and go. But the biggest thing is change. Uh, like if I look back from a whole, though, there's there's like a bunch of big things that stick out. And so it depends, you know, where you're at. But I would say like starting out, one of the big things was make myself look like a regular customer because, you know, stores aren't all super fond of, you know, ordering huge quantities and taking all their stock. Most of them are decent, but there is a couple where, you know, if you start buying, let's say, uh, you know, 250 video games, when they do a buy two, get one free, they're going to flag your account and they're going to have a chat with you. Uh, yeah. So, so, you know, making yourself, I guess, looking like a regular customer was kind of my, one of my first ones because I had been, you know, no more GameStop uh, for a store, no more uh, shoe carnival for shoes. And so that was a bigger, a bigger thing. But I mean, starting out, I guess, you maybe not have to worry about that then. Uh, that's why I would I'd say like the sales rank, because otherwise you're just going to, you're going to tie up a lot of money. You know, if you have like a million sales rank things or 600,000 sale rank things, it's just going to tie up a lot of cash. And yeah, they'll sell, but the something in, you know, 600,000 sales rank might sell once a quarter or three times a quarter. And that's, you know, that's kind of rough. Um, but you know, if I kind of just kind of extrapolate from there, then I would say my next biggest challenge was probably not switching to FBA soon enough. Like I know I'm throwing a lot out here, so maybe I'll stop after <laughs> this one, but I was, I was FBM for that first nine months of March, uh, March of 17 to December of 17, not until December of 17 that I actually send some things in for FBA and it was December, but still when they hit there, they just sold immediately. But it was, I just wish that I would have, uh, you know, maybe, not maybe, but I wish I would have moved to FBA a lot sooner. Yeah, and um, I, I mean, I, I personally have never, uh, I did sell some FBM um, right at the start, but I knew the power of FBA. And, and I knew that you could just ship um, unlimited quantity, especially at that time, um, send as, as much as you possibly can. And the likelihood, if you've done all the analysis correct, of course, uh, it it would sell. But um, uh, so you're in. So if, when you think of when I think about the from a USA point of view, um, what's been your experience when it comes to like from a opening wholesale accounts, for example, Jay? Because I know here in the UK, it it does certainly help if you have a warehouse, if you've got a unit. Uh, you represent yourself as a as you know as a, a retailer as a business um what's it been what's it like in the the u.s so like for example if if somebody was expanded from the uk to the the u.s um you know what difficulties may they have if any uh, so this is also a great question because it's it's more or less the solution to the GameStop and the shoe carnival thing. And that is instead of buying from retail outlet, buy it from the wholesale place. So uh, when I've done it in the, in the beginning, anyways, it was a lot of like going on Google and just looking through entertainment earth and uh, what's the other big one. Oh, it's not going to come to mind now. Uh, but the really like obvious stuff, I guess, when you do like a Google search and you, yes, you'll open an account, but a lot of times like there's no, products that are going to be too great or everybody knows about those even with if you got a discount or what have you so i i mean unless you're gonna like dig deep and go to page 12 page 16 page 34 in google when you do this search then i would say that's uh that's a good way otherwise i w i just uh found some of my best luck this year from taking the back of like a a, a sauce and uh looking for the company name and then just calling them directly like uh nice. hey 
I'd like to, you know, buy this stuff wholesale. Can you provide more information? And uh, I mean, there's a little, I guess that's kind of vague, but it's, you know, a little bit more than just that. You know, I, I've been, you know, I love your product. I've been selling it for a long time and I'd like to learn more about how I can buy it in quantities. You know, maybe you could approach it that way too. But, uh, you know, they'll either do one of two things, either they tell you no, or uh, they'll, they'll typically say, well, yeah, you can talk to this department or what have you. In either case, though, it's usually either like a transfer or it's going to be, here's our list of distributors and, um, you know, other companies that sell our product and then you can reach out to them. So that's been nice. more or less, the, that's, and that's been one of the better routes. Otherwise, you can do the Google search for, it depends what you're looking for. Like, let's say it's for toys. I could go toy distributor and then let's say Madison, Wisconsin, or you know, whatever's local to, to where you live. And then again, you might end up having to go to page 9, 11, 17, but you typically find at least a couple things there. But yeah, those have been, you know, that's been more or less. And, and since you moved into the warehouse, Jake, have you, uh, have you found that you've um, been able to uh, talk to suppliers uh, and they've been a little bit more receptive of you or um, has it been more difficult? You know, what's been your experience uh, throughout that? Uh, yeah, so the second part of your question I never answered. And yes, it uh, it has been a lot better because it just shows like you have a commercial address and you have possibly the ability to accept freight or uh, it's just an area that is in the commercial area, which also helps on shipping costs a lot of times for those suppliers rather than shipping it to a residential or them needing a lift gate or that kind of stuff. So the warehouse has definitely helped. It just shows a little bit more like you're in this for a while. You're going to be in this for a long time. You have the tools. You're like, you're being real about this, I guess is what I'm trying to say. And in one case though, the uh, two cases, actually the, uh, cause there's one about two months ago where the supplier actually did visit me. So uh, nice. the supplier comes in and checks out this place. And we picked a day when we were actually doing things, whereas today the team has off, but uh you know, brought them in and they asked some questions and I asked some questions and it was nice to have that face-to-face -face, uh, meeting. Yeah, so it's which definitely is, helped. Which is, yeah, which is going to be, um, which is always going to be a bit better than uh, inviting them to your home address or uh, to your garage on, on the outside, you know, so, um, but, sure. uh, you know, one of the things that's definitely in, in need for, uh, from, for us from the UK going into the US is is that support when you think of from a, a prep service point of view and i know that you've been helping a number of of, of, of our prep partners um so what what's been the experience like actually introducing prep partners into the warehouse and and working with other sellers yeah so it really it makes a better use out of the space because you know as much as i'd like to say i could fill 1200 square feet eh, you know products in products out so it it makes a lot of sense to also help clients and help them grow their business in that. So, you know, again, I have the ability to accept freight. So we have a little uh, stand up uh, truck and that. So that's been dealt a key because that saves the clients the actual lift gate fee. Because in the beginning, uh, one particular client, well, they all kind of thought they needed the lift gate service. But then I let them know that, hey, we have a stand up truck here. So we don't need that. Uh, and then also just the whole room thing and, if you've done any Amazon prep, you know how it is. If you're if you're in your house and you got it on the kitchen table and the couch and the chair and the TV I stand, remember, remember it very yeah. well. <laughs> yeah, I've seen those pictures of your place. Oh my gosh, like your <laughs> your whole walls, like uh, your perimeter of all your rooms, Kev, were just like you had a path. You had a path to walk like from the living room to the kitchen. Uh, yeah, and and even if it's in your basement, guys. Uh, you know, your ceilings are only so tall. So these, you know, these, I don't know, uh, 15 feet, I'd say, uh, maybe eh, probably 15 feet, uh, you know, so like you, you can use the vertical space too. So when, uh, when we do get near capacity, which we got a ways to go, we'll just end up adding more pallet racks and maybe even like a right angle fork truck, a right angle one, so that we can, you know, keep the rows close together. And then, you know, so we could, we can really fit a lot of stock in here and in a safe manner. So there's a lot of, a lot of advantages to a warehouse. Yeah. And, and one, of, one of the things that, um, you know, we, me and you have been uh, friends for a good, 
about four years now. It's been a, it's been a while, three, four years. Uh, wow, amazing. Um, but one, one of the things that I love about you, Jake, is that you, you're um, from a building your business perspective, you know, you, you, you're into personal development, you, you like to read books, you like to learn, you like to share, you like to uh, contribute to others. And you, and you, you always believed in uh, building systems in your business and, and building teams in your business. And I think, um, you know, from that perspective, it, it really does help, especially when you're working with others as well, that you're able to work together as a team on how you can work through issues or uh, how you can support uh, an, another seller potentially. So um, uh, that's what, a good point, been... Kev. Sorry, go on. Uh, that's a good point because like, say somebody needs uh, pictures for ungating or something. Well, we've done that before. You know, you take all picture, all six sides of the image and you can send it on. Or similarly, if, oh, it just left me now, darn it. Oh, uh, if somebody w- needed, had an issue about ungating or wanted to know a little bit more about scaling, like we can help you there too. We'll get on the phone and we'll chat with you. And that's happened before as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, um, you know, it's been it's been great to, to catch up with you, Jake. It's been great to have you uh, back uh, sharing. It looks like you're, you're, you are gearing up to having a, a very, very fun uh, and exciting Q4. Uh, that's for sure. Um, but, uh, uh, you know, for, for those that are, are watching, uh, where, where can people find you, Jake? And um, uh, where are you hanging about online? I, yeah, my, I have a YouTube channel and it's, it's been a little bit since I put content in there, but there is that route, which is just you know, Jake Diego. Otherwise, Instagram is probably one of the better ones. It is a little bit of a variety show, so I'll kind of warn you right now. But I mean, if you if you got a question, I'm good about answering any kind of que- any uh, DMs, direct messages and that. So uh, on Instagram, that is uh, Jake dot underscore Diego. So, yeah. yeah and, the two and- best and Jake is also our um, uh, USA uh, manager for systemized fulfillment. So, uh, for if you are interested in getting started in the US and you're looking for a prep service, then um, you know, please reach out to us. We're more than happy to to schedule a call with you, uh, learn a little bit more about you, uh, learn about what your goals are. You know, Jake, Eunice, the the entire team in the US, they've been there, they're based there, they have actively selling there. They've got a lot of, they've got a wealth of experience, and they'll be able to answer any of your questions. Uh, and they have done with the the partners that we've we've had over the the last few months and and six tw- six twelve months or so, which is uh, amazing. So um, yeah, th- thank you so much for your time uh, today, Jake. It looks like you uh, um, very very busy. Uh, you know, when you when you think back of the videos of three years ago when you was at home or in your basement to uh, maybe a year ago when you were just getting into your warehouse and now, you know, 12 months on, you you look at your warehouse. You you'll, it won't be long until you need in a second, a bigger warehouse. Uh, yeah, it's good to take pictures along the way, like you say, just to see where you're at because you don't always realize it because you are you know, you sometimes get trapped in like the day-to-day stuff and then you just need to stay, take a step back every now and then, you know, Oh, wow. You know, they got a 240 piece food shipment sitting out there or, you know, that kind of stuff. And you just, it's a, it's good. So same thing with some of the clients, you know, they really want to get moving in that. And so we allow them to, uh, you know, wow. Instead of sending, you know, 300 units a month, you're up to a thousand. In that. So that's, it helps, uh, helps us all, all grow together, I guess. Super exciting, and, uh, and and what we're going to do as well, we're going to um, I'm going to share videos down below of the the history of our um, the videos that myself and Jake have created. There's lots of uh, to me. There's lots of there's been lots of golden nuggets that you've shared over the years, uh, sharing. Uh, when you quit your job or when you um, got into the warehouse, you know, all the lessons that you've learned from building the team, etc. So I'm going to share lots of other additional uh, videos for you to watch too. But if, you, if you've if you got any questions whatsoever, don't hesitate to, to reach out. More than happy to uh, to help you out with, with any questions that you may have. Um, really looking forward to the next time, Jake. Um, thank you so much for, for joining today absolutely thank you and yeah thank you guys for watching this amazing see you guys soon